Chase at the 40. Look at that move. Look at Chase go. Oh, my goodness. What a gear. He comes down to this in his car end zone. Intercepted. McPherson. And Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. Boss here. Mix is going to throw. Open man. Tor Higgins. Touchdown. Drives. Touchdown. Joe Burrow has his first rushing touchdown of the season. Who day, Bengal fans? He is Mon. I am Jake. This is the Bengals Pulse, the heartbeat of our Cincinnati Bengals. Mon, it's been um, it's been a little interesting since the last time we did the Bengals Pulse. Uh, a lot to get to, like I don't know, maybe the Cincinnati Bengals signing one of the top five offensive tackles in the NFL and definitely the top offensive tackle in free agency. Mom, before we get to all of that, how you been doing, man? How's that bump on your head? Uh, it's doing a lot better. I uh, had the staples removed the last week. Uh, big scab was on there. It's finally dissipated. Elbow still the elbow. It's going to take a few more weeks to get that fixed. But signing Orlando Brown made everything better. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> and I tell you, listen, uh, I, I, we, we have to pat ourselves on the back a little bit. A couple episodes ago, we talked about the Cincinnati Bengals going all in, making a big splash in free, ag- free agency. We did say day one, and we did emphasize right tackle a little bit. They did make that splash. A key need on this roster, right tackle, left tackle, needed to get upgraded upgraded and they did that they did it dramatically and i i just you know i'm i'm looking forward to talking to talking about it i did not sleep that night i i think i slept maybe one hour i was just up i couldn't sleep i was on spaces those guys jumped on and and started talking about it for hours and uh it it was uh it's fun being a Bengal (laughs) fan it really is and and I'm just glad that we got a uh, quality, quality, very, very good left tackle to protect our our Ferrari, our, our stud quarterback, Joe Burrow. Well, I know you were up because <laughs> I got it. My phone rang. I was sound asleep. My phone rang about 1030. And uh, uh, but I, I was excited, excited to hear the news as well. I mean, you're right, Mon. I don't want to toot our horn, but the Bengals pulse is right in the middle of everything. Our sources are top-notch. We are right in the middle of all the crazy Bengal news. Two episodes ago, Mon, we talked about this Bengals team going out and making a big splash, going out and getting one of the top tackles in free agency. And not only did they, they got the best tackle in free agency. And Mon, Orlando Brown, Four years, sixty-four million, thirty-one million the first year. I think forty-six after the second. This guy is only twenty-six years old, Mon. And now we have four offensive linemen starters who are signed for multiple years. Joe Burrow has got to be ecstatic. I know we are. Uh, Orlando Brown, a two-time Super Bowl champ, a guy who really anchored and carried that Chiefs offensive line throughout the playoffs last year. And I love it now. All the Chief fans are like, oh, we don't need Orlando Brown. We got Jawan Taylor. Listen, let me tell you right now. Jawan Taylor is not in Orlando Brown's league. Orlando Brown is a top five tackle in this league. That's why the Chiefs went out and spent $140 million on him last year uh, or two years ago, right? The two years ago? Yeah. Uh, I think so. This guy is just, he's a dude. He is a dude. And now we're starting to see, it's so weird because I'm on my phone tonight. We had some, I had some computer problems. It's very weird. I'm like looking down at the camera, but my, it's, uh, we're in a situation now where after all of this takes place, our man Jonah Williams says, well, I don't want to play right tackle. Uh, you know, well, Jonah, you know, we, we do have you for 12 million next year in the books. What do you think, Mon? Should the Bengals, uh, should they give in and, and trade Jonah Williams like he wants? Or do you think this guy needs to be a Bengal next year? What do you think? 
You know, I, I guess I'm going to show my age here. I'm a little bit old school. I, I believe he's under contract. He signed that uh, uh, tender, and he's guaranteed that that uh, that twelve plus million dollars next year. The Bengals cannot cut him. If they cut him, they it's twelve million dollar cap hit. They could potentially trade him. If uh, if your team and your coaching staff ask you to switch positions, I I I believe you should do it. I, we see defensive backs that do it all the time. We see other position groups that that you know players will jump out of their comfort zone to go help the team. Uh, the team always comes first. It's not personal. I don't have anything against Jonah Williams. It's, it is his contract year. I understand that uh, him going to the right side and struggling could affect him millions of dollars for the you know free agency uh, cycle next year. He is under contract. I believe the team comes first. I think the Bengals have been good to him, and I think he should go and play right tackle. Will that happen? I hope it does. Uh, I, I don't think he's a great tackle in the NFL. I think he's an average to above average tackle. Big upgrade getting Orlando Brown over him. I want to say something real quick, Jake. I love on Twitter how there's a lot of people out there they they can they say they hate pro football focus, but then all they do is use pro football focus metrics to prove their point. And then I when know, you counter, right. and when you counter them with pro football focus, they just don't <laughs> want to hear it. selective outrage. Orlando Brown is night and day a better player than than Jonah Williams at left tackle. Orlando Brown was a was the nineteenth rated tackle in the NFL according to Pro Football Focus. Jonah Williams was sixty first. Uh, you mentioned how big Orlando Brown is. He's 360-plus pounds, huge. Talk about the Bengal run game improving. Uh, you know, our offensive line is on the, you know, our tackles aren't the biggest guys with the Denigy playing a lot last year when Collins went down, more of a finesse style. So it's going to be good to see that giant guy over there teaming up with Volson. We're going to have a very big offensive line. Right tackle still an unknown, but – our offensive line play has improved dramatically, and it's made this already good Cincinnati Bengal team even better. Well, uh, and we talk about PFF because Orlando Brown, over the last, I think, eight or nine games of last year, he was the number one rated pass blocking offensive tackle in the NFL, according to PFF. He was like at a 88 or 89 uh, grade. Again, you talk about the run game. What about the pass game? I mean, this guy is is a dude when it comes to pass blocking, and now he is going to be Joe Burrow's blindside for at least the next four years. This has just got to make Frank Pollock and Zach Taylor and Callahan and Joe Burrow and everyone else involved uh, with that Bengals offense just ecstatic. And again, our Chief fans – you can say what you want to say, but the Chiefs tried to make room. They tried to make room at the last minute and steal Orlando Brown back from the Bengals, but they were too late. Orlando Brown, a Cincinnati Bengal. We have not only got a top five tackle in this league, but we took the best offensive lineman from our possible, our really our own, our only competition right now, the Kansas City Chiefs, we take their best offensive lineman right from um, right from out under them. And uh, this Bengals team now uh, looking pretty good going into the draft. Lel Collins comes back healthy. You got to think now he's possibly the starting right tackle. Maybe him and Jonah, if Jonah stays, fight for that spot. But either way, the depth too. If Jonah is a Bengal next year and Lel is the starter, now – now the Bengals' offensive line's got some depth that that I really – I think something that we haven't had. I mean, it's not an Adenije or an Isaiah Prince or a guy like that that we're having to worry about throwing in there. And now maybe Jonah Williams comes off the bench. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Jonah Williams saga. Yeah. But I know this, and let me just say this right now. Once again, Duke Tobin and this Bengals' front office – they they go out and they hit an a uh, uh, 550 foot home run with Orlando Brown, uh, and again maybe this was the plan all along, but if you're telling me if you told me in the beginning of free agency 
Jake, you got to give up Bomb Bell. You got to give up Jesse Bates. You got to give up Samaje and Hayden. You got to give up those four guys, and you're going to get one of the best tackles in the NFL. I do it in a heartbeat. In a yeah. heartbeat. Great job by the Jake, front office. It is a great job. If you subscribe to The Athletic, Paul Daner had a uh, play-by-play how it broke down exactly getting um, uh, Orlando Brown to sign with the Bengals. The Bengals were actively looking for tackles. We all knew that. But they weren't. Yes. They weren't. They didn't approach Orlando Brown or the other top tier candidates. They did not. They were looking at mid level guys. Orlando Brown's representative contacted the Bengals the day of the signing, early in the morning. So the Bengals and management met, and they decided, "Hey, let's pursue this." They started exchanging numbers back and forth, and they struck a deal at ten o'clock at night. So it's funny how Orlando Brown they had offers or uh, people. Were, I don't know if they had offers, but the Steelers and the Bears were actively pursuing him. The Joe Burrow effect is real because he wanted to play for for a a Super Bowl contender, and he wanted to play with Joe Burrow. And, again, hats off to the Bengals for pursuing it, uh, making a very competitive offer because there was other teams involved. And thank you, Joe Burrow, for being a Cincinnati Bengal because you had a lot to do with it also. (laughs) He did. And don't forget the Kansas City Chiefs trying to come in at the last minute and scoop him out from underneath us. But Orlando Brown's a smart man. He wants to play with the best quarterback in the NFL. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Joe Burrow effect. Are you sure about that? Because according to the Chiefs fans on Twitter, Orlando Brown sucks. I know, right? (laughs) It's hilarious. he He carried them to a Super Bowl championship last year. But, yeah, he's not good. Um, right. let, let's get on because there's another, there's another sneaky good signing here. Nick Scott, the starting safety from the, uh, Los Angeles Rams, a guy who started against us in the Super Bowl last year, uh, a, a guy who, uh, is basically a more athletic Von Bell, a guy that comes downhill fast, good tackler, good in the box type safety, uh, the Bengals go out and get him for three years, twelve million dollars. This is a great signing, Mon. That now you have, now you go into the draft with Dax Hill, with Nick Scott, and now your your safety situation looking a little bit better. Maybe still not quite where it needs to be, but now you have a veteran starter who has won a Super Bowl in this league at safety. Uh, a guy that comes in, and again, uh, the Bengals once again go out and they get these quality guys at a very good contract situation. I mean, just think about this real quick, Mom. The Bengals signed Orlando Brown, top five tackle in the NFL, for the exact same amount that the Falcons signed Jesse Bates for. That, to me, is insane. That is insane how good the Bengals did this when the Falcons just played a safety who position-wise, Mon, is far down the list when it comes to uh, you know the importance and money and everything else that goes into the NFL. And you go out and get maybe the most important position besides quarterback and get it for the same price. It's just incredible. But tell me about Nick Scott. Mon, what do you think about this signing? Yeah, I, I didn't know much about him I, until I heard his name on uh, Twitter that the Bengals had him in for a visit. I did some research on him. His athletic score is off the charts. He definitely is a, a more athletic uh, safety compared to Von Bell. I mean, Von Bell wasn't chump change, but this no. Nick Scott is super athletic. Some of the highlights I saw, the hit he did on uh, Debo Sam, Samuel in the championship game uh, two yes. years ago, a uh, monstrous textbook hit. He looks like a player. Dax Hill replacing Jesse Bates. We know his athletic score was through the roof. The the Bengals got much more athletic at the safety spots. That is a good thing. But listen, we have to we have to temper it down a little bit. The three three years in the system, uh, Von Bell, Jesse Bates with Lou Anarumo's system. That's going to be tough. You know, that's something the Cincinnati Bengals are going to overcome. But I will say this, the athletic uh, uh, potential of those two new starters, 
I think that will help compensate for that. And they're going to get better and better each week. And the Cincinnati Bengals aren't done there. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Eli Apple could come back, cornerback, uh, maybe another vet cornerback. You know, they're all going to communicate. The safeties and the cornerbacks are all going to make each other better. The Bengals are not done reinforcing the back end. I expect one or two potential draft picks this year. We're going to be fine back there. Luana Rumo, defensive back coach before he became a defensive coordinator. That's his specialty. Robert Livingston, Burke, they have great defensive back coaches. That unit is going to be ready, and the Bengals are going to be absolutely fine. Well, we see two. We see two, Mon. Uh, you know, the Bengals bring in Taylor Rapp, a guy who is the other Rams starting safety next to Nick Scott. Uh, Nick Scott obviously being the top-tier guy uh, between the two. I can tell you Rams fans were going nuts on Twitter that the Rams allowed Nick Scott to walk. Um, they obviously feel about Nick Scott the same way we felt about Von Bell, which is a good thing. You know, that that's a good thing. You want guys like that, that, you know, uh, the outsiders looking in can see that they're a difference maker. I think, you, like you said, you are switching. You are giving up that experience in the system. You're giving up the leadership. But remember this, too. We worried about C.J. Uzama leaving. We talked about on our show when he left, we talked about the Bengals losing that leadership in the locker room, but they didn't, Mon. They didn't because this locker room is so solid that losing a Von Bell and a Jesse Bates, it it, it hurts. It definitely hurts. I don't want to underplay that. But there's so much leadership in this locker room that the leadership thing – you're, you're not going to see that change. You're, you're just not going to see it change. There's good quality guys in this locker room, and they're not going to allow it. Joe Burrow and those guys are not going to allow any type of, of slack off from the leadership role. Now, the Bengals also go out, and they re-sign Trent Taylor to a one-year deal. Uh, again, a, a I think a solid signing. Uh, Trent Taylor, I think he was – third or fourth in the NFL in in punt return yard average or um, and also I think uh, it was maybe third in punt return average or fourth in punt return average and maybe third in um, uh, I don't know average to punt return or something like that but uh, Trent Taylor was a, a top five punt returner which is insane to think about because we want that we want that um, explosiveness back there, but Trent Taylor, a top five punt returner in this league last year, and now bringing back Travion Williams, bringing back Trent Taylor, you have your kick returner back, you have your punt returner back, uh, the Bengals, and again, I don't think they're done. I do not think they're done. Uh, they, they they still, again, maybe still talking to Taylor Rapp, uh, C.J. Gardner is still out there. The other safety from the Eagles, he is still out there. Uh, you have the Bengals also signed uh, Mr. Ford. Uh, so we bring in another quality offensive lineman, a guy who the Bengals loved coming out of the draft. Uh, Ford uh, playing for a couple different teams, but a veteran guy that can come in now and solidify that depth. I really think the Bengals looked at that depth piece last year when we had all those injuries and thought we cannot put guys like a Dennis Hay back in the football game. What do you think about Mr. Ford? Well, I, you hit it right on the head. The Bengals were really high on him in 2019. They uh, thought about actually trading up uh, into the second uh, earlier into the second round to potentially pick him. They weren't able to do that. He's had an up and down career with the Bills and the Cardinals. He hasn't developed the way everybody expected it to. to, to. But I believe, uh, you know, uh, the Bengals have a long history of getting players that haven't quite developed and just re reinvigorating their careers. Reggie Nelson, to name one, BJ Hill. I can see Cody Ford. Von coming Bell. In. He, yes, Eli Von Bell. Well, well, Eli Apple, big one, absolutely. Von Bell was pretty yeah. productive at the Saints. He was pretty good. But Eli Apple, absolutely forgot about him. Cody Ford is going to come in, and he knows he's on a one-year contract. He's going to bust his tail. His 
best buddy, Orlando Brown, who he played with at Oklahoma. They were the both yep. look in tackles. I think we're going to get the best of Cody Ford this year. I think it's going to be, it could be a turnaround year for him. Great signing. I'm glad they did it. Uh, concerning the punt return thing, Jake, I have nothing against uh, uh, Taylor. Taylor is very reliable. He'll pop you. Uh, he'll pop a 15, 20 yard return every once in a while. I just want somebody more d- dramatic. And I'll tell you, if you look back, Sky Moore for the Chiefs against us, his punt return sealed the game. In the Super Bowl, he had a 50-yard punt return that sealed the game for the Chiefs. Those, they don't happen as much as they used to, but if we could get a punt returner that's reliable, I don't want somebody fumble fingers like Darius Phillips. If we could get somebody that could just get us four, five, six, seven yards more per per punt return, the potential to get a 60, 70-yard punt return, I just don't think Taylor can do that. But I agree with you. We are not done. There's going to be other people that we're going to sign and target. Uh, we, we do have some position groups that are a little lacking right now, especially with P. Ryan leaving. Unknown what's going to happen with Joe Mixon. Travion William, Williams, I'm glad he's back. I think he's done really well as a punt returner. He has potential as a running back. Kick off. Yeah, as, well, he has pot- I think he could be a sneaky good running back. Not a starter, not a starter. But kick returner, yes, I think he was an upgrade over Chris Evans and Chris Evans. Is he going to have a future on this team? Nobody talks about him. He is, he just reeks of talent. I don't know. Can he get out of this doghouse? but there's still time. There's still a lot of quality players out there. The Bengals could, could uh, potentially get in free agency. Well, let, let's real quick. I want to say one more thing about Cody Ford. Cody Ford is a guy that maybe, maybe can be an inside outside guy, kind of a swing guy, uh, he said he's played. He, he played tackle in college. Uh, you know, obviously he's played primarily guard in the NFL. But I just think it's a great depth piece. And we talked about how important it was that the Cincinnati Bengals fix this offensive line. And I, I, I really think they have gone beyond that and, and has really solidified this offensive line now with Orlando Brown bringing in Cody Ford uh, as a depth piece. Uh, this offensive line is looking much better. And you know what, Mom? Don't be surprised if at 28 the Bengals draft a tackle. It could very well happen. You know, I mean, this is, a, this is a situation now where we talked about best player available. Now we are really talking about a possibility of best player available with what the Bengals have done this past week in free agency. <clears throat> I, I agree with you about the running back spot. Let, let's talk about Trent Taylor too one more time because you want reliability, Mon. That guy has been very reliable back there in that punt return spot. He doesn't drop the ball. Uh, you know, he's very reliable catch football. And I said it earlier, I think one of our first shows we talked about this uh, is as a coach, for me, when I send my punt returner out, all I want is to make sure that he gets me the ball back. Don't make the dumb mistakes like Darius Phillips did against 49ers. It can cost you games. And Trent Taylor has been solid as our punt returner. That's very fair, and it's hard to argue with that. I agree with you. We can't have fumbles. He did have one this year, but it didn't cost us. He is extremely reliable. And he had four or five returns where he had, I think, maybe 10, 15-yard punt returns. You think he's going to break it, but it just doesn't happen. Jake, obviously we're diehard Bengal fans, but I know you remember the days of the past when the Bengals were struggling, things weren't going well, and then somebody named Pac-Man Jones will pop a 70-yard punt return, and the next thing you know, it wakes up the team, and they go on the win by three touchdowns over a 70-yard punt return. That happened numerous times with him. I agree. I agree. I get your point. There's something about that. What's happening? It doesn't happen that often anymore, though. You don't see a lot of explosive plays uh, in the punt return game. You just don't anymore in the NFL. Uh, but I agree with you. I agree. I, and and who knows? Maybe maybe the Bengals aren't done yet uh, at that at that punt return position. Let's talk about tight end right real quick, Mon. We, we don't got to. we don't got a tight end on the roster. Uh, you know. Um, Drew Sample and, and Mitchell Wilcox, I don't think they're coming back. I don't think they're going to be Bengals anymore. Uh, and obviously Hayden Hurst now signing with the new uh, Carolina Bengals. 
which um, is pretty much what's going on in Carolina. Carolina has decided that the Bengals are the way to go. Uh, Von Bell, Hayden Hurst, Andy Dalton. Uh, it's going to be hard. I, I think I think it's that team is going to be a team that uh, the Bengals don't don't play this year. They're not going to see him in the Super Bowl because the Panthers are not going to the Super Bowl. But this might be a, a team fun to fun to watch. You got a lot of ex Bengals on this Carolina Panthers team. But uh, Carolina Panthers uh, or the Carolina Bengals, whatever you want to call them, come in, they get Hayden Hurst. Now the Bengals don't have a tight end on this roster. Uh, they did bring in a couple this week. One of them, a, a Bengal, uh, an ex-Bengal and Seathan Carter, who is more of a special teams guy. Uh, and then a very interesting guy, a guy who played with Joe Burrow at LSU. What do you think, Mon? This guy, he is he is a heck of a blocker. He's a he's a great inline blocker. He's actually a better blocker than Hayne Hurst. What do you think about Mr. Monroe? Uh, I would love for him to come to Cincinnati. Foster Monroe's done well against the Bengals. He has a couple of career touchdown receptions against us. He does have a history with Joe Burrow. I hope that Joe Burrow effect works. The only thing that concerns me right now is uh he is being uh, courted by the New Orleans Saints. He's from that area. He played football at LSU. I think they might have a little bit of a lead on us when it comes to his services. And he, I played, expected he, played, with, he played with Derek Carr, right? He did play with Derek Carr at the Raiders, and Derek Carr is the quarterback of the Saints now. <laughs> that could have a pull. We'll find out tomorrow. There are a few other tight ends available in the free agent market. The Bengals will draft the tight end early. But uh, Dalton Schultz still hasn't signed. Wouldn't that be great that we got the top-rated tackle in free agency and somehow we could pull, uh, you know, I'm not – the Dalton, Dalton Schultz, I'm just – this is Mon talking. That would be amazing if we could get him because he's the number one rated tight end in free agency. But he hasn't signed, if anybody. Um, I keep on hearing people talk about Irv Smith Jr. Out, uh, he was a Minnesota Viking. I think he played at yes. Alabama – very highly rated. He's been injured a lot, a lot of potential. He could potentially come to Cincinnati. Seathan Carter, core special team player when he was here, uh, he's not going to give you much at that position. He'll be a good blocker. No. I don't expect him no. being a pass catcher. Uh, concerning the guys, a sample, I, I could see Mitchell Wilcox potentially coming back. They did cut him, or they didn't tender him because it was going to be yeah. like a $2 million tender. They needed to free up some of that money. I would not be surprised if Mitchell Wilcox came in. Is he a starter? No. But Mitchell Wilcox, he seems to be getting a little better each year. He'd be a good tight end three. They will uh, they will add a tight end in free agency, and they will add one. Don't be surprised if they add two during the draft uh, early. Uh, first, second, or third round pick is going to be a tight end. Well, Mom, and, I'm with you right now. If they don't get if they don't get uh, Foster Moreau or uh, or they don't get Dalton Schultz at twenty eight, they're going tight end. I'm telling you right now, that's going to yeah. be the pick. I mean, if if Moreau and and Dalton Schultz are not Cincinnati Bengals, uh, the Bengals will be going tight end at twenty eight. I, I think there yeah. is no doubt about that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, that's not the case because you just don't want to pigeonhole yourself. Uh, where you know you got to take a guy, and maybe that guy ends up being a reach. Uh, it, you know, who knows? But I, I think the Bengals are going to go out. I think they're going to get one of those top tight end guys, and then I, I agree. I think they're going to draft a guy too, pretty high. Uh, whether or not they get one of those top guys or not, I think tight end is going to be a position that we see uh, taken very early by our Bengals in the draft. But overall, so far, Mon, I think, you know, it's so funny because after the first couple of days of free agency, everybody, I mean, Twitter was just going crazy. Bengal fans going, we have to, we have to be patient. And I, I, I feel like I said this to you early on, Mon. I don't want to say, I'm not saying I was right or anything. But we, we have got to, as a fan base, we have got to start understanding that this is a different Cincinnati Bengal organization. They are different. They are different. This is not an organization that is worried about comp picks anymore. This is not an organization that's not going to go out and, 
and and fix what is broken. This is not an organization that is not going to be big hitters in free agency anymore. They're just not. So as Bengal fans, you've got to you've got we've got to understand this. We've got to be patient with this organization and know they understand that what we understand that this Bengals team could be great and they already are but they could be a, 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 a dynasty as long as Joe Burrow is a Bengal this Bengals team and organization could end up being a dynasty in the NFL uh, just be patient because they they know what they're doing Duke Tobin has been he has not given us any reason these last couple of years to question anything that he has done Jake when you draft and when you build an elite roster the Bengals did it back 2010 2011 2012 that 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 string of five consecutive uh, uh playoff appearances we're doing that now we have an elite roster very solid roster we do have some things we need to tweak when that yeah. happens we've talked about this in previous episodes when you have talented players they want big contracts so the key to the Cincinnati Bengals what happened with Orlando Brown great they're not going to be signing guys, uh, free agents from other teams every year for $50, $60 million. We're going to be spending $60, $70 million on our own players. But yeah. it's key for this Cincinnati Bengal team to continue drafting well. The downfall of that team from 2010 to 2015, we had a string of horrible drafts. I don't want to even talk about them right now. They were terrible. And that's what led us to the age of Joe Burrow because the teams were so bad. We had three consecutive drafts where, I mean, they were just monumental failures. And it led to Joe Burrow. It led to DJ Reader. It led to Trey Hendrickson. It led to Mike Hilton. It led to all these free agents we had to sign because our roster was depleted. We can't have a repeat of that, and we won't have a repeat of that because I think the Cincinnati Bengals better prepared. They have amazing scouts. Duke Tobin, Mike Potts, uh, uh, Steve Redivick. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. He's a great. He's a the West Coast scout. He's the one that helped negotiate the Orlando Brown um, contract. These guys are elite. They do a great job, and they know exactly what they're doing. The Bengals are in good hands, and we're just gonna ride this wave. The era Joe Burrow, because guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna have a Super Bowl trophy, if not one, a, at least two. I'm calling it. That's Mon's hot take right now. We're gonna have at least two championships during Joe Burrow's career. Uh, and listen, I, I think, again, I think it's safe to say that if the Bengals can go into this draft, and I agree with you, because after 2015, oh, man, those, those, those drafts were just atrocious. And even before that was atrocious. Um, but this Cincinnati Bengals team, it, it's just different. And like I said, we have to be patient with these guys. They know what they're doing. The front office knows what they're doing. Uh, it, it's the, it's no longer uh, the the Mike Brown show. It, it's not, and that's not anything to say against Mike Brown. Uh, you know, I, I'm very. Uh, it says a lot that he understood that and has stepped away and has allowed uh, his his daughter and her daughters to start running this organization. Uh, and that says a lot about Mike Brown because it tells me that he wants to win. And I, I just, I think we have to get out of that rut as Bengal fans that, oh, uh, this, because that's what you saw after the first two days of free agency. Here we go again. Same old Bengals. But I mean, Twitter was just going crazy, Mon. And it was two, it was only uh, like a day and a half into free agency. You know, we just got to trust this football team. We got to trust these guys that are running it. Zach Taylor is he he's gotten a taste of it. There's no way he is going to allow this Bengals team to start falling back into the same routine type of thing. Uh, I just I love what the Bengals have done in free agency so far. And I think we're not done yet. I think this next week uh, for next week's show, we're going to be talking about one, possibly two more signings. Uh, of guys that are going to make huge impacts on this football team on. 
I I want to go back to the frustration on Twitter. Some of it was ridiculous. I was one of the frustrated ones. And this is what frustrates me, though. We need to get out of the mindset. What did we say two episodes ago? The Bengals are going to make a big splash. They have to target the tackle position. There's so many people on Twitter, people that have multiple thousands of followers, people I respect. They keep on talking. They throw names out of tackle. Uh, $2 million. We'll get them for a bargain, $5 million. We don't need bargain right tackles. We don't need that anymore. We need people that are going to come in and be productive pros and get us Super Bowl championships. We said it. If the Bengals had – Jake, let me ask you this question. If Orlando Brown was a Cincinnati Bengal last year, would we have made it to the Super Bowl? I think we would. We would have won it. We would have had home field field advantage. Kansas City would have played at Paycor Stadium if Orlando Brown and Woody Ford were on the offensive line last year. I, I posted that on Twitter, and a lot of people agreed. I know I, I, it's not – I'm not inventing a time machine and going back. It's just I really think he he makes that much of a difference. If he was playing left tackle for us last year, we would have won the first game of the season. We would have won against the Cowboys. Guess what? The Cincinnati Bengals have home field advantage, and they're playing the AFC Championship game at Paycor Stadium, Super Bowl 57, the Cincinnati Bengals are playing. That's the that's what I'm talking about. We need to aim high in free agency. I get it. We can't sign everybody to eighty million dollar contracts, but when we have a glaring need like we did at right tackle and left tackle, I don't want two, three, four million dollar band aids. Let's make it right. And you know what? I salute the Bengals for making it right. Well, the Bengals are sitting right now, Mon, at about nineteen million. I think a little over nineteen million left. Uh, far as cap wise and again that could change depending on the joe mixon situation that could change depending on the jonah williams situation but the Bengals are not done yet i I just feel it uh i think next week on the show we're going to be talking about a couple more signings and uh then really attacking this draft with best player available uh it's very exciting mon i'm very excited about it I'm going to give you three names. We haven't really talked. We did mention running back. There is a glaring need right now at that position. We don't know what's going to happen with Joe Mixon. If I was betting on it, I I don't think he's going to be a Cincinnati Bengal next year. I could be wrong. Pro Football Focus had the top 25 running backs. Only three are remaining. Here's the three names. Who would you want? Kareem Hunt, Damian Harris of the Patriots, or Jarek McKinnon of the Chiefs? If the Bengals want a veteran presence at running back, obviously they're going to draft one pretty high this year. Out of those three, this is Pro Football Focus's top 25. They're the three remaining ones that are not signed. I want Joe Mixon. I want Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon's better than all three of them. I want Joe Mixon. He is. I want Joe Mixon. I mean, if that's that's what the choice that you're giving me, give me Joe Mixon for one more year. I want Joe Mixon. 12 million bucks. Now, uh, to me, to me, Mon, that is worth it. That is worth it. If you're telling me, if I agree if with you, I agree with you. Okay. If, if you're telling I, me, I mean, I, yeah. love, I like Damian Harris. Uh, I think he's a tough runner. But um, if you're telling me I'm choosing to pay Joe Mixon 12 million for one more year, or I'm going to have to choose one of those three guys, I'll take Joe Mixon. I agree with you in this sense. He's much better than all three of those guys. Much yeah. better. Uh, I just don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to ask him to take a pay cut? There's a lot of off-field issues going on, a lot of things there. I, I don't know much about that, just yeah. what I've read. It's unfortunate, but he has been a mo- – since the unfortunate incident he had at Oklahoma, he's been a model teammate. The t- team loves him. He's energetic. Yep. I would love for see it, for him to come back – Maybe they work something out. We'll see. But if he doesn't, if they plan on moving on, they they, they need to get somebody. They need to get somebody because I don't want to depend on a rookie to be our, our running back this year. There are a lot of solid running backs in this draft, and I expect the Bengals to pick one by the first four, first four rounds. All right. All right, Bengal fans. That's another edition of the Bengals Pulse. Once again, if you liked this, Make sure uh, that you like, share, and subscribe this podcast. If you like this podcast, 
Make sure you check us out on all the awesome podcast platforms, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. Make sure you go on there and give Mon and I that five-star review. We very much appreciate that. Uh, as always, follow us on Twitter, at Bengals underscore Pulse 9, and on Instagram, the same, Bengals underscore Pulse 9. And as always, check out all the awesome podcasts right here on the Wincinnati Podcast Network. He is Mon, Robo, Elbow, and all. I am Jake. This is the Bengals Pulse. Who day, Bengal fans? We will see, see you guys. next week. Bye-bye.